Hi guys, welcome to Styles by Sienna. My name is Asinuke and on this channel, we basically focus on, on sewing tutorial. So if this is something that interests you, kindly subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you'll be notified anytime I post a new video. To my returning subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate you. So today we are going to be making a tutorial on how to cut and sew a simple peplum top with 360 degree flare and this is the fabric we'll be using so without further ado let's go right straight into it so i'm going to go ahead to fold my fabric into two making sure the self edge of the the upper self edge and the lower self edge are lying directly on top of each other so i folded it into two so i'm going to go ahead now to take the largest circumference of the upper bodies which is the bust so the bust pan i'll be using for this tutorial is eight and a quarter of an inch so i'm going to take my tape and place it on the surface and mark out eight and a quarter of an inch so on that eight and a quarter of an inch i'm going to add um add two inches seam allowance to it so i'm going to note that as well so on that two inch inches i'm going to add two extra inches which is going to serve as a zipper allowance so on that extra two inches i'm just going to fold it into two again like this the way i'm folding it now so i'm just going to go ahead now and align it properly make sure that it's bending so our measurements will not so our clothes will not be short so i'm now going to go ahead and cut it like that so guys i've gone ahead to cut it and this is what we have so i'm going to fold my um, fabric into two so after folding it into two the way i'm folding it now we are going to start drafting the front panel so to start with you are going to mark out one inch from the beginning of the fabric and use a straight line to connect that one inch and that's going to serve as our starting point so on the shoulder line i'm going to mark seven and a half inches which is our shoulder measurement and that's seven and a half i'll go down by one inch and I'll connect the line to the shoulder line and that's our shoulder slope. So I'm going to go ahead to mark out the bust points, which is nine and a half inches. Then I'm going to mark out the waist in the waistline, which is 16 inches. And I'm going to go ahead and add one extra inch to it. And that's going to make it 17 inches. That extra inch is because we are adding it to our flare. So I'm going to repeat the measurement on the other side and form a straight line. So that's the bust points, the waistline, and the extension. So the next thing I'm going to do is to come up by one and a half inch on the on the bust points, and that's going to serve as our chest line. So on that chest line, I'm going to go ahead now to mark the seven and a half inch that we marked on our shoulder. So I'll mark that and connect it to the shoulder slope with a straight line so i'm going to go ahead now to take the midpoints of that line that i just made now i will mark it out going by half an inch then on the chest line i will measure my boss pan measurements and just connect those points together to form a ham hole so after connecting it together i'm going to go ahead to add one and a half inch seam allowance to the bust pan circumference so the next thing i'm going to do is to go to the waistline and mark out our dart line so our dart line is, is three and a half inches so on that line i'm going to go out on both sides with half an inch so i'm going to go to the bust point and make sure the three and a half inches again then i'm going to connect all the lines on the waistline to that three and a half inch on the bust point so after connecting that i'm just going to insert my waist circumference so the waist circumference we are working with is six inches so i'm going to go ahead and mark it then the one inch for the that we took in for the dart i'm going to add it then i'll add the one and a half seam allowance so i'm going to extend the lines on the waistline to that um one inch that we added as the extension so after that i'm going to connect it to the bust points with a straight line like that so after connecting it to the bust points the next thing we are going to do now is to go ahead and mark out our neckline so the neck depth we are going to be using is four inches so and we are going to be marking out three inches as our neck width 
So I'm going to connect those points, although not in a circular form. I want to have a diagonal shaped neckline. So that's what I'm marking out now. So after marking out our neckline, we are going to go ahead to cut out our fabric. So guys, it was when I was cutting out the fabric that I realized that I didn't add half an inch that we're going to use to join the front panel to the back panel together. So that's what I'm adding now. so guys this is the front panel right here so the next thing i'm going to do now is to notch the dart line after notching the dart line i'm just going to set it aside and go ahead for the back panel so that's the center back for the back panel so i'm just going to mark out the one and a half inch for our um, zipper allowance so the difference between the front panel and the back panel is the zipper allowance the armhole and the neck depth so the neck depth and the armhole of the front panel is always deeper than that of the back panel. So everything that we am doing now is what I already did on the front panel. So that's why I'm just rushing through it. So guys, on the zipper allowance of the back panel, we are just going to go in by half an inch. So we go in at the start of the zipper allowance and at the end of the zip allowance. So that half an inch that we went in with, we are going to add it to the side seam of our back panel. So we are just going to go ahead now and blend it to the bust points. The reason for this is so that we can avoid bulge at the back of our zipper when we attach a zipper to this back panel. So guys, this is the back panel and this right here is the front panel. So we set it aside and start working on our flare. So for this flare, I'm going to go ahead to draft it on the pattern first so it will be clear to us. So the waist that we are using is um, 24 inches but we are dividing it by four and that's because we are folding our fabric into four when we want to cut our flare. So let me just give you an example of how you are going to fold. You will fold it into two like this so after folding it into two the way i folded it then you fold it in again into two so that's the point where you are going to mark out all your measurements that's after you know the measurements you are going to use so and this is the way this is the way you are going to know how you um the measurements you are going to be using so remember i said our waist is um 24 we divided it by four and that's six inches then we are going to add one one inch for our zipper allowance at both sides so that's going to make it two inches that we are adding so that's like eight inches then i want to form pleats on my um flare so i'm going to add like five inches to it so that's like 13 inches so now i'm just going to try to mark out uh, a measurement try to check the measurement that is going to um add up to 13 inches for us you know we are not marking we're not going to be making the flare in a straight form it's going to be in a semicircle like so i'm going to mark the measurements i'm going to be using diagonally so let's try out six inches first whether it's going to give us 13 inches so I'm going to go ahead now to measure the 6 inches that we just marked now. So I'm measuring it. So remember it's not a straight line. So you'll be curving your tape as you are measuring it. So after measuring it is like um, 9 and half. That means we still need more. So I'm going to add 2 inches to that 6 inches and see whether that will be enough for us.
so now i'm just going to measure it again to know whether this is going to add up to 13 inches so it's add up to 13 inches so this is our 13 inches so we are going to be making use of 8 inches for to form the starting of the flare so i'm going to take my um turn my pattern paper to another side so to get the length of your flare you are going to divide you are going to uh, subtract your half length from the top length so the top length is 24 inches and the half length you are using is 16 inches so 16 minus 24 is 8 inches so i'm just going to add one inch extra to it because i'm going to use half inch to join to the upper bodies and i'm going to use lining to turn the remaining half inch so nine plus eight is going to give us 17 inches so i'm going to go ahead now and measure it if the pattern paper is up to 17 inches so it's up to 17 inches so i'm going to measure 17 inches straight down and 17 inches diagonally so i'm just going to mark out our flare now so i'm already marking out the eight inches which is going to serve as the beginning of our flare that means that's where we are going to be attaching to the upper bodies So after marking it out on the pattern paper, I'm just cross-checking the measurement, then I'm going to cut it out. So this is what our flare is. So I'm going to go ahead now to fold our fabric into four. But it was when I started folding that I realized that my fabric will not be enough. So I'm just trying to measure 17 inches horizontally and 17 inches vertically so i folded this fabric into two because i'm going to use a different fabric to cut to join it together to make it a full flare so guys make sure that your fabric is what will be enough for you if you are not on the bigger size two yards should be enough to make this style this peplum top so the fabric i'm using now is not up to two yards i don't even think it's up to one yard so i'm gonna have to cut it on um the other fabric as well so join it together at that side so the next thing i'm going to do is to go ahead now to cut my lining for the flare and i'll also cut the lining for the upper bodies so i've cut the lining and i made sure the lining is shorter on the armhole and that's because i'm going to use the lining to turn the armhole side because i'm not using sleeve so for the flare as well the lining is shorter because i'm going to use lining to turn it at the damp part then i cut the lining together instead of separately like i did the fabric so the next thing i'm going to do now is to go ahead and start working on the upper bodies so i'm going to place the lining on the right side of the upper bodies so i'm going to um join the neckline join the arm hole, turn the arm hole, make the dart taking the dart then i'm going to do that for both the front panel and the back panel so guys i've gone ahead to do that for the front panel i've taken it taken in the arm hole so that armhole is looking so neat so i've gone ahead to take in the dart as well and i seal down the lining to the fabric so i'm gonna have to take in the zipper allowance for the back panel as well so now i'm just going to place them on each other align them properly then i'm going to paint the shoulder and paint the side then i'm going to use the one and a half seam allowance with left to join the side and use half an inch to join the shoulder together so it's time to start working on our flare i've gonna have to join the two fabrics together so the next thing i'm going to do is to take the lining so i'm going to um, cut open one side of the lining so i'm slashing it open now after slashing it open i'm going to place the lining on the right side of the fabric then i'm going to go ahead to pin it all through the um the fabric so after pinning it down i will take it to my machine and go ahead to sew it from the start to the end so i'm gonna have to join the um upper bodies together 
and this is how it looks so i didn't join the i didn't do anything to the dampers because we are adding it to the flare so i've set it aside so i've gone ahead to join the down parts of the flare also together so i'm going to go ahead now and notch it all through the fabric so after notching it all through the fabric i'm just going to turn it inside out So I'm going to go ahead to turn it inside out now. Then I'll take it to my machine and sew it down like that. So after that, I gave it a good press. And this is why it's looking so flat. So I'm going to fold it into two, fold the flare into two equal parts. So after folding it, I'm going to take note of the midpoint. And I'm going to use my scissors to create a notch there. So after creating a notch at the midpoint, I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to go ahead and mark out one inch for the zipper allowance. So I'm going to mark out one inch on that side like that. So once I mark out the one inch, I'm going to go ahead and notch it as well. So I'm trying to notch it now. So after notching it, I'll now pick that notch at the midpoint and place it on the zipper allowance notch that I just made. So that means we already have another folding. So I'm going to notch that other folding as well. So after notching the other folding, then I'm going to bring my upper bodies. Then I'm going to like open up the zipper allowance. After opening up the zipper allowance, I'll pick the first um, notch, which is the first zipper allowance on the flare so i'm going to place it on the zipper allowance notch of the fabric so the second notch i'm going to place it on the first side seam which is after the zips that we just added now so i'm just going to pin it down as well so that means the notch of the midpoint is going to fall on the notch of the midpoint of the front panel so i'm going to notch i'm going to pin that one down as well so the next notch is going to fall on the second side seam so i will attach it and pin it down as well so the last notch is for the zipper allowance so i'll place that on the zipper allowance of the main bodies as well so then i'm going to pin it down so after pinning it down as you can see there are some extra spaces in the flare and that's to form the pleats that I want to form so I'll take it to my machine and sew it round then I will attach the zipper to the clothes and that's all so guys this is the final look of our peplum top so this is the flare part and this is the pleats that I formed with the extra allowances that I added to it so let's turn it to the back now so we can see how it looks on the back side so this is the back of our peplum top as you can see it's sitting properly thank you so much guy for watching this tutorial please do well to like this video and subscribe to this channel to enjoy more streaming content till my next video guys bye